Well, we're headed off to the Intermountain Train Show again. Yes. This year it's in Layton. This little drive, but worth it. Yeah, they moved it again. It's been moving around lately, but this year, Layton. So this is the Fremo N Club. Right. And Fremo is really, really neat. And these guys, man, they're just getting around with these these uh, Fremo modules. Fremo N, or I sometimes call it Fremon. Oh, <laughs> that's what I wanted to call it. Yeah, it, but man, these, these guys have the neatest modules. Fremo is a really interesting uh, set of standards that really allow for a lot of flexibility. This is the Wendover Airfield. Right, I remember seeing this out to Wendover. This is just cool. Yeah, these are the same guys that did that show uh, out at the Wendover Airfield, and it was really neat because one of the modules was a module of the Wendover Airfield. But here's a, here's a link to that show. It was really, really fun. The thing I like about N-Scale is you can pack a lot into a tiny little space, and that's why I love it. Yeah, it's especially if you're doing what these guys are doing with the, the Class A modern railroading. Right. Because that just takes up an enormous amount of room, and uh, the only fix that I know of for doing that accurately is to go to a much smaller scale. Right. What a beautiful bridge this is. Isn't that gorgeous? Wow, I love the canyon underneath. Wow. It's just, ah, it's so well done. Right. So let's wander around a bit and see just what else we can see. Look at uh, the toy trains over here, UTCA, the toy train people. I see a lot of N-scale modular railroads here, not right. just the... Uh, not just the Fremo, the Fremon people, but there's a lot of end scale going on here. One of the fun things about this show is it's uh, it's always been well known as a hands-on show. Right. And they encourage people to actually do things, build models here, build actual layouts. Uh, this was a demonstration on how to build trees. Right. And uh, when, when the tree is finished, then uh, the participant gets to take their tree home with them. Right. That's fun. Now, as we mentioned before, this show is put on by the local NMRA, the Northern Utah Division of the NMRA. This is probably one of my favorite parts of a train show is the pizza box. It's a really fun thing. They encourage mostly kids, but adults too, to build their own little miniature pizza box size railroad. Right, I love it because it's compact and it teaches how to do uh, a layout and scenery. Yeah, and just hundreds of kids are getting involved in this. We did a show, here's a link to that show, on their pizza box program and it's been so successful that National NMRA is picking it up and they really want to advance this idea as a national program within the NMRA because it's just such a successful way of getting new modelers involved in the hobby. Right. Because uh, everybody can fit a little tiny pizza box layout. Sure. Now, as we mentioned before, this great big huge setup over here, this is the Utah Toy Train Collectors Group. And half of this area is devoted to 
American Flyer, two rail American Flyer, which we see right in front of us here, and the back part is three rail Lionel. I'd be torn between the two, but I like Lionel. I like them both. Right. And uh, when it comes to toy trains, six of one, half dozen of the other. Right. Uh, they're just, they're so similar and yet so different. But I think I would also gravitate a bit toward the line. Right, just, you know, Christmas and the tree and the train that went around the bottom. And the fond, fond memories of that. Yes. And now I look at this and I go, no, I prefer American Flyer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could never make up my mind. Now, over here, the dealers. You know, this is some of my favorite areas. This is treasure hunting. Right. Which is sort of like gold mining. Yes. Similar idea. <laughs> Here's some of my favorites. Speaking of Lionel or whatever, I like these old tin plate trains. Oh, the old tin plate three rail Lionel. Yes. Oh, man. Yeah. I just love this stuff. We've, we've got a little tiny bit of this really early stuff. We don't run it. No. But it's just really fun to collect. Just static models. Look at these old cars. I remember buying these at the Five and Dime. They didn't have an inside. This was before Hot Wheels cars. Right. These are super basic. Oh, here's uh, some real early Lionel. Not as early as what we were looking at before. But, but pretty early. Oh, man. And the boxes. I just, everything about this stuff I just love. Yes. It's just, uh, like I said, I don't. I don't have that much interest in running it, but no. oh, I just love seeing it and I love just maybe having a little bit of it on the shelf to collect. Right, it just brings back memories. Oh boy, doesn't it? <laughs> well, yeah! And this stuff's really fun. I love the china. Boy, I'll tell you, just collecting any of these uh, railroad antiques for me is fun. Uh, the china, it's just, it's so fun to just reminisce of what what it was like when this stuff was in actual use on the dining cars. Exactly. Wow. No. Now this is another uh, Lionel group. Uh, I guess you could say more of a fine scale Lionel, trying to follow more of a prototype practice. Look, some of Steve's buildings. Exactly. Off of, you know, this uh, fellow who's a member of this group, Tori, has been buying a lot of Steve's models, and here they are. Right. And it's always fun to see them again here on this three rail right. railroad. But these guys are much more into Accurate scale, I right. guess you'd say. It's still three rail and Lionel, but they follow pretty accurate uh, scales on their 
their trains and whatnot pretty accurate O scale. It's just that it's based on Lionel three rail right. standards. Right. Now this is the aforementioned Tory, who's been buying some of Steve's buildings, and he has his own railroad at his house. Right. And he builds these modules with this group, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. This is uh, Wasatch End Scale, uh -huh. and that's our friends uh, Bob and Karen that, that also do that. Another one of these end scale groups, but this is really a fun railroad. It is. I love it. Yeah, and we've been over to, to Bob and Karen's house. They've got a beautiful, beautiful railroad in their basement, but uh, this is their modular railroad their clubs modular railroad that they take around to the shows yes i wonder if they're referring to me there they might be they're turning <laughs> you on and off and <laughs> i'm pretty famous for trying to fix things by turning them on and off So this is a fun new feature. One of the members here has cut a hole through the backdrop and put in a moon. Isn't that cool? Isn't that, that just turned out so great. So it's an actual photograph of the moon and then he's backlit it with LEDs and fiber optics. And it, uh, it just sits back there glowing on the horizon. It really came off nice. It did. That's a great feature. This is one of my favorite locomotives, the Union Pacific three-unit turbine. Isn't that neat? Oh, we've seen two of those, the real ones. Right. Only two of them survive, and we've seen them both. Right. One of them's in Chicago, the other one's in Ogden. Yep. We would like to thank the Gates Conference Center for letting us have the 2022 Train Expo here. We'd also like to thank the Connor for the 2022 Train Expo. 
This is another fun club here, the Ofer Tintican Western. Right. Another N scale group. Mm -hmm. Oh dear. Mm -hmm. It's okay. This is always fun, the Lego people. You know, I, I had no idea that there were Lego railroads. I did not either, <laughs> but it's interesting. And apparently it's been around for a long time. Oh my. This is fun to see Lego railroads here at the train show. Amazing. That's our. This is our layout this now. Is a new layout. We're in the really? process of building. You bet. Where? <laughs> Sugar Space Warehouse. So this is really great news. This is the Golden Spike Model Railroad Club. Oh, looks like they have a plan. And, well, they used to be at the fairgrounds, right. and this show was at the fairgrounds, and those were glorious days. Uh -huh. Then they moved this to the Children's Museum. And then uh, the earthquake in 2020 destroyed the Children's Museum and their railroad right along with it. Oh dear. So they're starting over. But I love the track plan. We have got to get out there and see this.
And these modules uh, were brought in by John Pratt, uh -huh. and he does scratch building in S scale. Right. Both SN3 and S standard, but this is all scratch built. Isn't that amazing? And so next week we're gonna the whole show is gonna be devoted to his scratch built models. Right. Which are yeah, like you say, amazing. Oh, just mind boggling. <laughs> A lot of his locomotives are really rare brass models, and then some of them are kit-built brass kits. Wow. But all of them just unbelievable. Right. Well, and just like that, the Model Railroad Show is over. Oh, just that fast. All good things pass, I guess. If, uh, if you want to follow up next week with the show on John Pratt, then you definitely need to be a subscriber. You won't be a subscriber anyway. Right. <laughs> and the easy way to do that is with the upcoming blue button right there. Well, we're not sure how you found this fun train show on the Internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here on Tuesday because we're still dealing with scales and gauges. We'll see you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.